Hello and welcome to another edition of our presentation, our weekly webinar. And uh, today we shall be discussing AC coupling with Tronius. Basically how AC coupled the systems um, uh, achieved using uh, the Fronius products or Fronius inverters. So that's what we will be covering today. And uh, to do this, uh, here is your presentation team for today. My very self, Cyprian Okolo, the Technical Sales Advisor for Western Africa, uh, operating from Lagos, Nigeria, of course with uh, Fronius International. And then my colleague, Mohamed Sirat, who is the Technical Sales Advisor for Southern Africa, operating from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, he is with uh, Fronius South Africa, which is a subsidiary of Fronius uh, International. So together we will be uh, uh, presenting this webinar today. So have a quick look at what we have on the agenda. So we will be answering the question, what is AC coupling? So under this section, we'll be taking a look at the Fronius Spectrum AC coupling as an example. Uh, take a look at how the system is set up. Uh, go through data communication and visualization, and then go through some design rules. Then after that, my colleague Mohamed Sidat would now continue with uh, the Fronius Tesla AC couple system as another example of uh, uh, AC couple systems with Fronius, and then uh, give you some references, and then he'll take a brief look at the Fronius Gen 24 Plus AC coupling, and then of course there will be further information uh, afterwards. So sit back, relax as we uh, continue with this uh, presentation. So let's now begin with answering the question, what is AC coupling? Uh, for most people who, who uh, most installers who aren't too um, used to AC coupling, I would start uh, with uh, just giving you a brief about what uh, DC coupling is, because for regions where um, the grid isn't stable, you tend to find that uh, there are lots of uh, DC coupled uh, system when it comes to alternative energy. So this basically um, entails uh, your TV generator or your module connected to a charge controller, and which is tied to a battery and then connected to a battery inverter, and then this is connected to a load. But then for AC coupled systems or AC coupling simply entails uh, the direct coupling of the inverter in question to the load, as you can see. In this case, the grid tied Fronius inverter, as you can see, it's directly tied to the load but then of course tied to the grid uh, provided or generated by the inverter charger. And then of course this can be backed up by uh, either the grid or the gen set. So in summary, um, I would like to refer to uh, AC or DC coupling as um, the relationship or how the inverter in question seeks or takes its reference voltage. As you can see in this case, the DC or the battery inverter takes its reference voltage from the battery, which is DC. So that's why the system is basically called a DC coupled system. But for an AC coupled system, the Fronius inverter, as you can see in this case, takes its reference voltage or biasing voltage from the grid or a grid generating system or device, as you can see. So this definitely means that even if this setup here, that is in battery charger and the battery uh, is absent here, so long as it gets AC either from the grid or from the gen set, it will definitely function and then supply uh, power to the load point. So that's uh, the basic difference between AC coupled system and DC coupled system. And uh, in turn, I believe I have uh, sufficiently defined what an AC coupled system uh, is. So basically, where the inverters in question, the, the inverter in service picks or takes its reference voltage from. Good. So taking a look at um, systems or invert battery inverters that are compatible uh, with uh, the Fronius inverters to deliver uh, an effective AC coupled uh, microgrid or off-grid setup. Uh, we have, uh, uh, apart from Victron, which um, I believe is a product most of us all know uh, that we're very, very compatible with. We also have products like Tesla, Powerwell, Electronics, Schneider, Student. 
And uh, this, of course, blend very well with all our uh, Snap Inverter product lines, including the small, the small inverters, that is the Primo 3 to 8.2, and then the small Simo, also 3 to 8.2, which are usually used for residential purposes. And then, of course, the big uh, Snap Inverters, which we prefer to call the big Simo, and then the Echo, that is a Simo 10 to 20. Uh, kilowatts and then echo 25 and 27 kilowatts. So these are um, basically uh, used for commercial uh, purposes or installations. Yes, so uh, if you would want to know more about our product line, uh, please go through our YouTube uh, channel and uh, Sub Saharan Africa uh, playlist for you to get much more uh, insight into our product lines. Good. So still answering the question, what is acid coupling, uh, even after defining it. So we're going to give you a look at how the system uh, looks like uh, in terms of uh, using a, a single line diagram. So as you can see in this case, and as earlier described in the previous slide, um, the grid tied and batter, Fronius in this case, has the capability of supplying power directly to the load um, for, while generating its uh, uh, input from the PV generator, that is the solar panel. In turn, it can also charge the battery, of course, via the inverter charger, Victron in this case. And then, of course, uh, in the case of, uh, let's say, an overcast or nighttime, of course, it can source um, the grid from, or you can actually source or power the load points from the grid or genset, uh, as the case may be. And then um, combining both worlds, as in the best of both worlds, you can actually have what we call the AC-DC coupling. So this is basically combining the DC coupled system and an AC coupled system for the client to enjoy or have the benefits of what uh, the both um, systems have to offer. So in this case, you have a portion of uh, the TV generator directed or channel towards a charge controller, which now charges the battery. So the significance of this setup is that uh, in the case of uh, um, black start, so this is a condition when uh, uh, you don't have any grid, there isn't any gen set, and your battery is down. So once you're in this condition, uh, you can actually, once so long as the sun is up, you can actually charge the battery up to its threshold voltage, and then that, would now serve as a reference point for the Victron inverter to start functioning. So it uh, gets reference voltage, uh, starts functioning, generates the grid for the Fronius to pick and then start functioning and of course supplying power to the load. So that's what we call the black start. So that's uh, one of the main benefits of having an AC-DC coupled system. Good. So, um, Taking a further look at the Fronia Spectron uh, AC coupling, uh, yes, uh, we are very, very compatible with uh, Victron in that uh, there is a smooth uh, communication between both uh, inverters uh, in that uh, it helps to, of course, charge the battery optimally uh, because you find in most cases that uh, uh, for inverters that don't have um, good battery management system, you tend to find that the batteries tend to get overcharged. And uh, in um, uh, not too long a period after installation, you find that your batteries are, are, are dead already. So this is because uh, the inverter being connected to this battery uh, tends to overcharge it. But then this doesn't happen with the Fronius Victron uh, setup because the batteries are ensured that uh, uh, they get uh, optimally charged. So how is this done? So we're going to look at how this is done by um, taking a look at um, um, a typical system. Uh, let's say we have um, bright sunlight, uh, the DC is generating, the PV generator is generating uh, power in DC, and then your furnace inverter converts DC to AC and of course supplies the load point. And then the excess energy, of course, is uh, used to now charge the battery, as you can see in this illustration. And uh, unfortunately, we now have an overcast. Uh, maybe it's nighttime or low PV is being generated from this point. Typically, uh, what happens is that, um, of course, uh, it will uh, resonate in its uh, output because, uh, of course, low 
input, of course, will give you low output from the furnace. So uh, in order to satisfy what the load point needs, it will complement this with uh, uh, power being drawn from the battery to the load point. So in a case where the battery is fully loaded, now this is where uh, the magic happens. Uh, so instead of continuously charging the battery with uh, what inverters normally use, um, not too good inverters per se, uh, they normally use a continuous current charging, CC. Um, so what happens in this case is that um, immediately the system or the Victron inverter or the battery is full or almost full per se, it will automatically increase its frequency thereby reducing the feed in from the furnace inverter. So that's what uh, usually happens. So in that case, it will stop charging the battery and then only supply what the load needs. So no matter what the intensity of uh, the density of the sun is or the amount of power generated from the PV side, from the PV side of course, uh, only what the load needs will be supplied. The battery will not be charged further than it is supposed to be. So that's um, basically describing the uh, uh, how the Fronia Spectrum system works. So this is, of course, achieved by what we call the frequency controlled power reduction, because like I said earlier, at full battery state, the inverter charger increases the AC frequency. Now the Fronia inverter sees that as a signal for it to now step down its feed in power. So by so doing, the battery isn't charged further than it is supposed. And using this illustration, as you can see, as uh, the state of charge of the battery tends towards 100, the power impute uh, drops towards zero. And the, power, the charging current or the charging power coming to the battery uh, tends towards zero until it finally stops charging the battery. That is when the battery is uh, absolutely uh, um, charged up at 100%. Good. So that's it it's about um, AC couple system. I believe um, you must have uh, gotten all the information you need in that regard. But just in case you still have questions in that uh, concerning AC couple system, please uh, don't hesitate to post your questions and use the chat function to post your questions and uh, we will be glad to attend to you. So now let's take a look at how to successfully set up this system. Uh, there are basically four easy steps to set this system up. Uh, first of all, we have to start. Uh, uh, we'll start from the PV side. So we install the solar panels, um, uh, do your cabling appropriately, and then commission it in that aspect. And then, of course, start set up your Victron. Do your Victron configuration. Uh, set up your battery configuration. This is optional because uh, uh, different batteries come with different uh, configurations. Uh, so you can uh, do so if it uh, requires. And then, of course, um, do your commissioning in terms of AC coupling using the VE bus configurator that is coming from the Victron side, of course. And then, lastly, we're now coming with the Fronius uh, because the AC gets supplied to the Fronius by the Victron. Uh, you now select your MG setup, uh, MG50 or MG60, depending on your uh, operating frequency for, the, for your region. And then, of course, commission the data manager. So um, let's take a brief look into what I just said in the previous slide. Uh, for setting up the system, uh, different countries or regions have uh, their respective um, frequency that they operate with. For example, in Nigeria, uh, we use 50 Hz. And then uh, in the US, the operating frequency is uh, 60 Hz. So with this, uh, you could now select the respective uh, frequency according to uh, that in operation for your respective uh, region. So um, by doing so, you now uh, select the setup menu, which is uh, 73887. So I decided to put this um, dial part here to enable us understand how uh, we got to this code. That's for all in installers who tends to find it difficult in remembering the code. So this is how it uh, came about so that you can easily access it once uh, you have any installation in this regard. So first 
stuff you type or punch or tap the button second from the right five times once that is done um these five digits will be all zeros so once you see all zeros here you will now use the plus and minus uh, button to enter the respective figures as you can see so how do we get this respective figure this 73887 so it all emanated from the word setup s e t u p so using your dial pad on your phone that's uh, basically how you tend to get the code to be able to access the service menu so s on your dial pad is represented by seven as you can see e on your dial pad is represented by three and then T is represented by eight, same as U, which is also represented by eight, and then P is represented by seven, as earlier seen in the first place. So that's how you get your code for your setup, which is 73887. So by the time you have access to this setup menu, you can now scroll down until you see MG50 or MG60, depending on your on the operating frequency for your region. And uh, please, I would also, oh, like I always tend to emphasize, um, do not choose international 50 hertz because or international 60 hertz because I've had um, calls from installers uh, asking me that they usually have uh, problems with their setup. So that's because uh, at the end of the day, I discovered that uh, they used international 50 or 60 hertz. Please make sure. Or ensure that you choose MG50 or MG60. MG here simply stands for microgrid. So by the time you select that, you're sure that you've done the right uh, setup. <clears throat> so how to connect the inverter? Of course, this can be done via uh, uh, wireless LAN, or as preferably called Wi-Fi. Uh, you have to open the Wi-Fi access point on the battery display, go to setup and then choose Wi-Fi access point, and then connect your smart device with the network. Open on your browser, preferably Chrome. Open uh, the, type in the IP address, 192.168.250.181. Uh, this, of course, opens up, or opens up the, the, the platform for the setup wizard, which starts automatically and then guides you through the rest of the installation procedure. And then, uh, of course, how to connect uh, multiple freenets in battery in the case where you have um, a solar net ring. Uh, solar net ring basically uh, entails uh, the interconnection of uh, multiple freenets in batters. So as you would see from our uh, inverter uh, integrated uh, unit uh, on the inverter, we have um, the solar net parts, which you can see, which where you will see the uh, stop plugs, the RJ45 plugs. So they are all indicative of in and out uh, connection points for the solar net ring. So for this example, as seen here, we have four inverters set up. So uh, you will start with the first stop plug and then use a uh, CAT5 and above cable to now interconnect the inverters as you can see. So the out of one inverter goes to the in of the next one. The out of the very inverter goes to the in of the next one. And this continues until you get to the last inverter. For the last inverter, you now have this out plug being the stop plug, as we can see in this case. And of course, for every solar net ring, you require just one master, meaning that if other inverters have data managers, please, you would have to put or use the master slave switch to put uh, the rest of the inverter in the slave position. And of course, ensure that you address each of the inverters. So if this is your first inverter, it is named inverter 01. This is 02, 03, 04, as the case may be. Good. So let's uh, take a look at uh, how data communication and visualization achieved. Of course, um, with the use of a web interface, you can, of course, have access uh, to the inverter via the data manager. And then, of course, uh, this can also happen through the use of uh, Wi-Fi. And uh, via the router, of course, through an internet connection, you can have access to the VRM portal, the Victron VRM portal in this case. So with the Victron VRM portal, you will be able to have access to the entire system 
uh, components and uh, its uh, operating status. Uh, this can also be done, and we tend to advise here at this point that whenever you have an AC coupled system, please endeavor or ensure that you have the system, the Petronius uh, inverter registered on SolarWeb, so that by so doing, you will be able to um, uh, able to have the best support from both Victron and uh, Fronius, as the case may be. And then, of course, this can uh, be conveniently viewed on the Petronius Solar TV and, of course, on your monitoring device. In terms of uh, still talking about data communication, um, we can have access or communicate via uh, various um, communication interface that we have available on the inverter. Yeah, this is possible via Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, and of course, API using the JSON protocol, and um, of course, using uh, your wireless, uh, your LAN cable, as the case may be. So by so doing, you will now be able to view our systems um, as it is embedded on the Victron color control display, as you can see. And then here you can have a wholesome view of the system and how it operates, of course, including all the details of system operation. Now let's uh, take a look at um, a brief look at the uh, design rules. Um, just as uh, we always uh, mention, I'm sure this is not the first time, but of course there's no harm going through it again. Um, we need to make sure that uh, we, for AC coupled system, we need to make sure that uh, we comply with the uh, one to one rule or the factor one rule, meaning that uh, the peak power of the PV inverter must not exceed the power of the inverter charger. So this is to ensure that uh, the inverter charger does not get damaged. Uh, keeping in mind that our uh, inverters can, of course, furnace inverters can, of course, be overdimensioned to up to 150%. We should ensure that um, we keep this factor one rule in mind so that uh, we don't overload the inverter charger. Because all because since our inverters uh, have uh, almost a uh, um, power factor of one, so whatever it, it's generated from the PV side, of course, comes out as output. So we should keep this in mind when doing our system design. Of course, like I've said earlier, ensure that uh, you select MG50 or MG60. I've shown you how to uh, select the service menu code 73887. And then, of course, uh, we will be happy to give you the support you need. Uh, course, you can contact the Furnace System Partner, uh, FSP Plus, in your respective region. Uh, of course, you can also get support from your technical sales advisor, and uh, most importantly, from the Furnace Tech Support Hotline. So these are available for your service. Good. So with that, I've come to the end of my part of the presentation. Uh, my colleague, Mo, will be continuing from this point. Uh, which the Fronius Tesla AC coupled system. So, um, Mo, if you are here, please, uh, you can now continue with the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Supreme. I'll now take you through the Fronius Tesla AC coupled systems. Okay, we're first going to start off with a basic system diagram of how such a system would look. Um, and yeah, what's important to note is the different components um, in the system. Um, so firstly, we're going to start off with the Fronius grid tied inverter. Okay, um, And it's at a point over here, you'll only be able to use a single phase um, Fronius snap inverter, which will obviously mean you have to use the Fronius Primo snap inverter for such a system. Pull back up. Uh, you can go ahead and also install a three phase from your snap inverter, but then you will only get backup on one phase. So the other two phases will fall away when the grid goes down. But it's also important to note in the system is that we do have a Tesla Powerwall, which is basically an inverter charger and a battery in one unit. And we then also have what we call the backup gateway. This is a Tesla product, so it's this little small product on the right. Um, so that's the backup gateway, which basically controls um, the switching between backup mode and grid type mode. Uh, we then also have over here, which is basically an image of the Tesla Powerwall. 
Okay. Um, in the system, you obviously also have your utility meter. Okay, and you also then could have your phone, your smart meter, either on the load side or on the grid side. But we will discuss that a bit later on in today's presentation. Moving on, just want to show you a screenshot of the Tesla Powerwall 2 data sheet, and just to see um, compatibility. Um, so basically, with the Tesla Powerwall, it's it's one unit. Um, you don't get different sizes. It's one unit that you can string to another unit in order to increase the system capacity. Uh, so just to look at the nominal voltage that it operates at is at 230 volts. It's a single phase system. So if you're looking for three-phase backup, a Fronius Tesla system will not work, okay? This is only applicable for single-phase backup. Your grid frequency, um, it will operate at 50 hertz. Um, the total energy capacity of this Tesla Powerwall in terms of the battery storage is 14 kilowatt hours, of which 13.5 is usable energy. What's very important to note here is the real power, okay, which is five kilowatts. So this means that you can only attach a five kilowatt primer to a Tesla Powerwall. Okay, moving on, you then also have your 5 kVA, which is your apparent power. Um, your maximum supply fault current is 10 kiloamps. Your maximum output fault current is 32 amps. Then looking at your internal battery DC voltage, that's 50 volts. So again, it's a low voltage system. Your round trip efficiency, so this is all conversions take, taken into consideration is 90%. And the warranty on the Tesla power wall is 10 years. What are the characteristics of the power wall? Um, so basically when it comes to operation with the Fronius Snap Inverter, there's certain protocols that we communicate with the Tesla power wall in order to allow for charging, discharging of batteries and also um, to supply the load. Uh, we use a very similar protocol to what we use with Victron. Um, and this is what we call frequency shift. Okay. So it's very important to note with a Fronius Victron system is that your maximum solar AC rating okay, has to be five kilowatts. So that means per Tesla power wall, you can only have five kilowatts worth of solar inverter or less. So you can have a four kilowatt primer or even a five kilowatt primer with one Tesla power wall. However, if you have more Tesla power walls, you can increase this maximum um, solar AC rating. So we will have a look at a reference system a bit later on, which you will kind of see and get this more clearly. So when the grid goes down, um, the backup is almost seamless. So the changeover is less than 20 milliseconds. So this basically serves as a UPS system. Um, so when the grid goes down, we do, you don't even know the grid goes down because no electronic components will be shutting down during the short transition time. The Tesla gateway um, detects any sign of grid weakening. And this is basically done by ROCOF, which stands for rate of frequency sorry, rate of change of frequency. And this changes to voltage source mode um, on backup. What you have to note is that the power wall uses frequency shifting to control the Fronius PV inverter output. So it's the same methodology as with Victron. Uh, we use what is called GFDPR, which stands for Grid Frequency Dependent Power Reduction. So in this case, the Fronius inverter uses, uses the Tesla power wall and the grid reference. So the Tesla power wall is, is considered the grid in this scenario. And then frequency dependent, it means that the Fronius inverter is dependent and gets its frequency from the Tesla power wall. So if the Tesla power wall decides to increase its frequency, the Fronius inverter will also have to increase its frequency. Okay. With this setting, when the frequency is increased, we will get what is called PR, which stands for power reduction. So I've got a little graph on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, you can see at about 50.2 hertz, so when the Tesla increases its frequency from 50 to 50.2 hertz, it will automatically bring a response from the Fronius inverter. And the Fronius inverter is then programmed at 50.2 hertz to start doing what is called power reduction, okay, due to a frequency increase. And at around 52 hertz, um, this is where we will now get zero um, watts of output from the Fronius inverter. Moving on, we will now discuss the frequency droop control okay, of the Tesla Powerwall. Uh, basically, what, I just want to give you a quick definition um, as to what frequency droop control exactly is. 
Um, frequency group control is when the output power of a generator, which in this case is the phonus inverter, decreases as the frequency of the line increases. And again, the line is considered to be the Tesla power. So the frequency group is always attempted by the power system. And this takes the form of both a power-based frequency shift and energy-based frequency shift in these three steps. So your energy-based frequency shift uh, is dependent on the state of charge of the battery within the Tesla power wall. So the first step, the power wall will attempt to curtail solar power by gradually shifting frequency up. And this is indicated by this little blue arrow over here. So when we have 50 hertz, that's normal operation. However, all of a sudden we need to decrease um, the power output of the phonus inverter. Okay. How, how do we do this? The Tesla power wall will then increase um, its frequency. And this is the section over here. And during that period, the phonus will decrease its power output. The second step, the power wall will attempt to shut down solar by shifting frequency up to a maximum set by grid code, which in the case of the MG50, the phonus inverter, is usually two hertz above 50 hertz. Okay, so once the phonus inverter hits 52 hertz, you'll get a complete solar shutdown. The power wall will attempt to shut down solar by further shifting frequency by up to a maximum of six hertz. So this is only applicable when you do not select MG50 as your country setup. However, you should select MG50 as a country setup because within MG50, this is where we find the um, power reduction due to an increase in frequency already set up for you. My colleague Cyprian did um, touch on this topic earlier on about how to set up MG50. Uh, but what's very important to note, whenever you're doing AC coupling with, uh, it could be with Victron or with Tesla, you have to select MG50 as a country setup on the phonus inverter to enable your GF DPR functionality. Now moving on to the next slide, and we'll then now look at the energy-based shift. So this refers to when the power wall is almost full. So this basically looks at the state of charge of the power wall. The power wall will attempt to curtail solar between 98 and 100% state of charge. Okay. The reason it will do this is to prevent overcharging of the battery. If there's overcharging of the battery, you could cause damage to the battery system as well as to the charging system as well. So it's very important that the Tesla power wall can reduce the Fronius um, output power whenever the state of charge reaches close to 98, 100% capacity. The power wall will shut down solar when um, the state of charge is 100% capacity. And the power wall will always maintain a 3% buffer before returning to normal operation. Okay, so 3% would be 97% state of charge. Now moving on to the um, power-based shift. So with the power-based shift, we have two components. We have a reactive and a pro proactive. Okay, so the Tesla systems will always protect against oversized solar. Um, so the power wall will attempt to curtail solar when only 1,500 watts of charging power is available. And again, this comes down to protecting the charging system as well as to protecting the um, battery system as well. The power wall will shut down solar when about only 500 watts of charging power is available. Again, it's a state protection for the system. We then have a look at the proactive approach. The proactive approach protects against any derated power walls. Um, as you know, you know, given time, 15, 20 years, any electronic device will derate. And sometimes the duration could reach such a level uh, whereby the output power is now changed completely. Okay. So when it comes to this scenario, the power wall will shut down solar when less than five kilowatts per power wall of charging power is, is available. But as I said, this is something that's very futuristic. It's something that, you know, in 10, 15 years time when the system does um, depreciate or, you know, decreases output power due to age, uh, you will also still get, you know, that sort of protection. Okay, I just want to talk about the wiring diagram um, when we're looking at the single phase um, system setup. Um, so over here, we have the Fronius inverter, okay, which is then connected to your PV panels. Um, over here, we then have the Tesla power wall, which, as I said earlier on, is an inverter charger and battery system in one unit. The Fronia system is directly connected to the um, Tesla gateway. Okay. And the Tesla gateway has a circuit breaker, which then obviously necessitates the communication between the Fronia inverters and the Tesla power wall. And it also controls um, the amount of charging current that's going to the Tesla power wall and also can detect how much power is going directly to your loads. 
Okay, then obviously on the left hand side, we then have your meter box. Okay, we will be distributing the recording and the slides on this presentation. So again, you guys can have a look at this diagram you know, when you do want to you know, think of doing such a system. When you're now looking at the three phase setup, what's very important to note, you are going to go for a three phase Fronius Tesla setup. Um, it's very important to note that the backup is only available on phase one. So we can see very clearly in this diagram, we have a Fronius inverter, which could maybe be a SIMO or ECO, which is a three-phase inverter. This is tied directly to the non-backup circuits. Okay. So when the grid goes down, this inverter will also go down. Okay. However, we also have a backup circuit, which is only integrated on phase one. And this, in this scenario, would be the Fronius primer, which again is then directly tied to the Tesla power. As you can see with the gateway, um, this is the three-phase gateway. Um, from Tesla. Um, again, as I said earlier on, the gateway just necessitates the communication between the Fronius, the power wall, controls the charging of the batteries, and also, um, you know, you can also visualize what's happening in the entire system and also view it on, you know, Tesla's um, online monitoring platform. So now moving on to the next section, um, it's very important to note um, where to place a Fronius smart meter in the system. Um, so if you do place the Fronius smart meter on the load side, which is indicated over here, please note that you get no loss of pumps when in backup mode. And the reason for this is that when the grid goes down, the smart meter will not go down because it's tied to the load side. And as we all know, what is on the load side, we have the Tesla power wall on the load side, which provides the backup functionality for this diagram. Please note that the export limit will, however, not prevent too much power to Power if inverter is more than five kilowatts. Okay, now moving on. If you're looking at the full system backup um, with the Fronius smart meter on the grid side, please take note of the following. If export limiting is set up at a site, okay, so if some of you don't know what export limiting is, it basically um, controls an inverter and sets a percentage of which you want to feed excess energy to the grid. Okay. So as you can see in this scenario, the Fronius smart meter is on the grid side. So if the grid goes down, the Fronius smart meter also goes down with the grid. When this happens, we have a loss of comms when the grid goes down, and hence the inverter will now, um, and this will send the inverter to output to its maximum default export limit. If zero is the export limit, then inverter will produce no power. So I've got a little screenshot over here, and this screenshot is from the um, web user interface of the Fronius data manager, okay? And this is obviously needed in order to set up a Fronius smart meter. So in this case, um, if you set 5,000 watts as your maximum grid feeding power, this means that the inverter will only feed in a maximum of 5,000 watts to the grid. Okay. However, all of a sudden, if a grid now fails, the smart meter will also go away. Okay. And what happens is you need to select this box. And when you select this box, it says reduce inverter power to 0% if meter connection has been lost. So if your smart meter is on the grid side and you're doing full system backup, if the, the, the grid goes down, the smart meter goes down, and unfortunately, your phone is inverter will also produce zero watts. So just take note of that and be very careful when you are setting up zero export limits. Now, moving on, when you're doing partial system backup um, and when your phone your smart meter is on the load side, uh, please take note that not all loads are captured in this configuration. The reason for this is that you have two switch ports. You have a main switch board and a backup switch board. The smart meter will only detect what is on your backup switchboard and, and not what is happening on the main switchboard. Moving on to the next slide, um, if you're looking at the partial system backup, when the Fronius smart meter is on the grid side, if this is the case, if export limiting is set up at a site, lots of comms when grid goes down will send inverter up to maximum default export limit. If zero export um, system, then inverter will produce no power. So similar to the earlier slide, I'm sure. I just want to show you some references of the Fronius Tesla partnership. So, um, this is a reference in Australia uh, where they have three Fronius 5 kilowatt primos. Um, what they have attached to these three Fronius 5 kilowatt primos is they have 58 by 270 watt PV panels, okay, which is evenly distributed amongst these three Fronius um, inverters. They then also have two Tesla power walls, okay, installed. And this gives you a battery storage of 13.5 kilowatt hours times two, which is 27 kilowatt hours. 
If you're looking at the ratios, we have 15 kilowatt peak of PV to 27 kilowatt hours of storage. Now looking at another reference, this is an island of Tau, which is in American Samoa. Um, so with this installation, they did not use the Tesla Powerwall. They used what is called the Tesla Megapack, okay, which allows for really big systems. Um, so please do note, if you are using the Tesla Powerwall, you can only use 10 Tesla power walls in a string. So that gives you a maximum storage capability of, let's say, 160 kilowatt hours. If you want to go for anything bigger than 160 kilowatt hours, you then need to look at the Tesla Megapack, which is these big white units here in the bottom. Each of these Tesla Megapacks um, is, I think it's around 100 kilowatt hours storage, each of them. Um, so if you, you know, string these together, you can really go to big installations. So this installation, um, we had a 1.4 megawatt microgrid system, which was powered by Fronia SIMO inverters. So we had many Fronia SIMO inverters that were stringed to each other. And that were then AC coupled with six megawatt hours of battery storage by Tesla. Okay. This was installed by SolarCity. Okay. Um, they had 5,300 solar panels installed and 60 Tesla power banks. Okay. Installed. What is very unique is that this island is quite remote. Okay. So previously, um, before they installed the solar system on this island, and this island used to get all its power from two big diesel generators. Okay. Um, however, to get the diesel to this island costed a lot of money because it had to be shipped. And also, you know, diesel can be quite expensive um, as well when you, you know, only powering yourself with diesel. So they, they decided that, look, they want to go for a solar system. And now since they installed the solar system, this remote island can stay powered for three days without sunlight. And when these batteries need to be recharged, it will only take seven hours to recharge them. Again, they now no, no longer need to use diesel generators. We will now move to the Fronius Gen 24 Plus AC coupling. Okay, I just want to give you some um, facts of the Gen 24 Plus. Basically, with the Gen 24 Plus, it is the new hybrid inverter from Fronius. Um, it comes in two variants, the Primo Gen 24 Plus, which is single phase, and comes in power classes of 3 to 6 kilowatts. We then have the Simo Gen 24 Plus, which is three phase, and comes in a power class from three to 10 kilowatts. With both of these, of these inverters, we have two MPPT trackers integrated, and we also have one battery input, which is a high voltage battery input. Please do take note that this Gen 24 system will only be compatible with BYD battery, premium HVS, HVM batteries, uh, which is basically a high voltage lithium ion phosphate technology. Um, it comes in a very modular structure. So we have two variants, we have the HVS and HVM. With the HVS variant, we start from two to four modules, and that will give us a power um, storage of, well, energy storage of between 5.1 to 10.2 kilowatt hours. So each one of these gray blocks over here represents around about 2.56 kilowatt hours. When we add them in, in series, uh, we basically then build up the power capability. Then having a look at the HVM, which then starts from 11 to 22.1 kilowatt hours, it then starts from four to eight modules. So for example, if you're looking here on the left, this is, let's call it the HVS, um, BYD premium, okay? And this is a total storage of 10.2 kilowatt hours. And the little black box on top is the BMS system. So this BMS system will control the entire battery storage. And it also communicates with the Fronius Gen 24 inverter. Also, please take note that you can have three of these towers in parallel. So in essence, if I take three HVM towers with eight modules each, I can get a total storage of 22.1 kilowatt hours multiplied by three, which is around 66 kilowatt hours of maximum storage on the HVM. What's nice to know with the BYD premium battery, it's um, again allows for you know, ground mounting and also for easy installation and commissioning. So, both the Gen24 and the BYD Premium Battery are both, you know, IP65 rated, um, so they can both be installed outside, okay? Um, and yeah, um, they they both, you know, waterproof and dustproof. Um, I just want to add a point um, as well. With the Gen24, if you're purchasing the Simo Gen24 with a BYD battery backup, you will get full three-phase backup, okay? And um, if you buy the Primo Gen24 with the BYD battery storage you will get full single phase back. 
what can also be done with the Gen24 inverter is that you can AC couple it to an existing Fronia snap inverter, okay? So in this system, I have a Fronia snap inverter, which is AC coupled to a Fronia Gen24 plus inverter. I have my panels attached to the snap inverter, and the snap inverter will then convert DC to AC supplier loads, and then you can also send excess energy to the Gen24 plus inverter. This inverter in turn will then charge the batteries, and it can also discharge the batteries in order to supply the loads as well. At the same, at the same time, it can also take power from the grid and use that power from the grid in order to charge the batteries. It can also discharge the batteries and send that power to the grid. So this is what we call multi-flow technology on board. If you want to, you can also attach solar modules to the Gen24 Plus. That is also possible. Um, however, please do note if the grid fails or falls down, what will happen is that the Gen24 Plus will increase its frequency to 53 hertz, okay? And this will automatically cut off the Fronia snap inverter, okay? So when it comes to such a system, we don't operate on grid voltage dependent power reduction. What happens, the grid goes down, this Gen24 Plus will immediately increase its frequency to 53 hertz. And it does this in order to ensure that any other AC generators in the system are cut off from the system in order to make sure that we don't have any possibility of backfeed to the grid. Okay, so in this um, little image, um, I'm just showing you some arrows, um, just to get an overall better picture of how the energy flows um, occur in the system. As you can see, we can AC couple a Fronia snap inverter onto this setup. Um, what's nice, if we do AC couple a Fronia snap inverter onto this um, Gen24 Plus, you can maybe offer a client, um, you know, he has a PV system. However, you tell him when the grid goes down, What's going to happen? You're going to be limited to a percentage as your backup power. And that percentage will be the total power output of the Gen24 Plus. So moving on to further information. Uh, before I go on to further information, I just want to launch a quick poll. I really appreciate if everyone could share their um, answers. So the question is, which inverter brand do you usually use for AC coupled systems with Fronius? Okay, the first choice is Victron, uh, Multiplus or Quattro. The second one is Tesla Powerwall. Third one is Selectronics. Fourth one is Studer, and fifth one is Other. Okay, I'm gonna keep this question line open for, let's call it another 20 seconds or so. I okay, will be closing the question in the next five seconds, so please do share your answer. Okay, I'm sharing the result. Um, as you can see, the majority of today's attendees do do um, Victron Multiplus as the inverter charger for, for a Fronia system. Um, however, we can see that 7% also uses the Tesla Powerwall, and another 7% also, also uses Student. So back to the presentation. Um, yeah, if you do require any further information, um, you know, please go to our website. We have all our solution manuals, data sheets, etc. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where we have all our webinar recordings for the Sub-Saharan African region. Moving on, I just want to give you an infographic of the support regions amongst the um, three technical sales advisors for Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm starting off with my colleague, David Mwangi, who isn't here for today's webinar, but he should be here next week. Uh, but in terms of the countries that he is supporting, um, it's, I would say, the vast majority of Eastern Africa, with certain parts of Central Africa and certain parts of Southern Africa. So if you are from one of these following countries, and if you have a, any question, um, the person you need to contact is David Mwangi, okay? Then moving on to Western Africa, um, so with Western Africa, we only um, currently provide direct support for Anglo-speaking or English-speaking West African countries. Um, and my colleague responsible for those regions are, is um, Cyprian Okolo. So if you are from one of these following countries and if you have any questions or queries, please direct them to Cyprian Okolo. Then myself, Mohamed Sidat, I'm the technical sales advisor for Southern Africa. So it's all these green countries over here. So if you are from one of these countries and if you have a question, yeah, please feel free to contact me. 
again, if you want further information, uh, we also have, um, you know, direct numbers to Austria that you can call for, you know, technical questions, trainings, sales, international, after sales, and also the contact details that you can get those sales advisors from the sub saharan Africa. From my side, I'd like to thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, we will keep the line open for another 10 minutes to take on any questions. Otherwise, I wish you a good day ahead, and we shall see you in next week's webinar. Goodbye.